Ahoy there! This is another ship video. My least favorite Degrassi relationships. This is a list of my least favorite Degrassi relationships besides the obvious ones like the abusive ones, the cheating ones, the student teacher ones, stuff like that I did not include because those are just a given so I tried to um, stick to the ones that are my personal dislikes. Now I I know this is going to be touchy for some people, but let's all remember that everyone has a unique Degrassi opinion, and that's what makes this community so beautiful. As always, it was kind of a challenge making this list because, you know, if I don't like a ship, I just don't pay attention to it. So I really had to, like, journey deep inside myself to find out who should be on this list. Obviously, I do have other feelings besides what's in this video, but you gotta stop somewhere. All aboard! Let's set sail into these waters of my least favorite Degrassi ships. Number one, pirate ships. What's with those things? Number two, cargo ships. They are so boring. Like, can we get some color or something? Oh! Relationships. Right, okay. Relationships. Sorry. Changing course. Number one, Joey and Caitlin. Yeah, I'm gonna start this video by rocking the boat. I just don't like Caitlin. Sorry, I can't do that. I don't like Joey and Caitlin. I'm not denying their chemistry, but it didn't work so many times. And then 20 years later, we're still like, they're still pulling on our heartstrings and stuff. Like they should have just called it quits a long time ago. I think Caitlin should have called it quits that first time where he kind of led her on, but then turned around and tried to get with Liz instead. Like in seventh grade, okay? Like, mm -mm. It's just a bunch of crap all the time, and I just I don't have the energy for it. I don't like Joey, and I think uh, Caitlyn needed to stop settling or whatever the heck she was doing. I don't know. Number two, Drew and Allie. From the moment they set sail, I was not into it. It was kind of cringy the way she basically coerced and forced him into the whole relationship when you could tell, like, he didn't even really want to in the first place and she was just like desperate over him and it was gross and I just really didn't think they look cute together and I knew it was destined to go to crap because of his utter lack of enthusiasm from the very get-go number three Drew and Becky WTF no there's no rationalization for the strangeness you don't you don't date your dead brother's girlfriend and you don't date your dead boyfriend's brother. You just don't. Maybe, like, I know old people do that a lot, but, like, you don't do that in high school. It's just all amounts of weird. Um, I don't really know why the writers went for that. <sighs> you gotta keep some level of realism to this show, you know? Number four. I hate Eli with Claire. Crucify me. Yes, that may be one of the most legendary Degrassi ships. But it is not a boat I want to be on. Number five, Ellie and Jesse. I found it disgusting. I don't know why. <laughs> it was cringy, it was uncomfortable. Like they didn't really have any good times. They just had like embarrassing moments together. It just seemed like um he was too experienced for her in like a gross way, if that makes any sense. Number six, I'm sorry everyone, but I really don't like JT and Liberty. I know this is one of the most popular Degrassi relationships, but think about it. Did they ever have fun? Ever. No? Oh, no! They didn't have fun! It was just miserable constantly. It was just torture, a hundred percent of the time. So to this relationship, I say no. When I picture... Jibberty. I picture Liberty doing this face. And I picture JT doing this face. And that's Jibberty. <laughs> Number seven. Jonah and Frankie. I was so mad when this happened. This is entirely disgusting. It would not happen in real life. It really had like a cradle robbing, innocence destroying kind of vibe. I mean, you know, you, you may already know that I hate Jonah, and I find him to be extremely pompous, and he sort of had this air that he knew what was best for Frankie, and Frankie's just his little toy. Number eight, Emma and Kelly. 
I know this is very short lived, so you may not remember, but in college, Emma dated this pretty boy named Kelly, and there was no point of that crap. It's frustrating because Emma's my favorite, and I feel like she never really got to have a real love, like that real high school sweetheart, or even college sweetheart, but <laughs> the college episode sucked. Um, she, she never got to have that one true love, one that really worked well for her. And I know like the closest thing was Sean, but personally I didn't really think they had a lot of chemistry and I really don't think they physically looked cute together either. And uh, yeah, Kelly and Emma weren't, that wasn't fun. That was not fun. And like you didn't actually like feel the feelings. It just seemed very superficial. Number nine, Marco and Dylan. It's kind of hard because they did, they did have some good chemistry, especially later on in the show but at the beginning of their relationship very similar to the way I feel about Jonah and Frankie this whole like mentoring slash teaching aspect to a relationship I find is kind of uncomfortable it makes it seem like Dylan's teaching Marco how to be gay and teaching Marco how to be a boyfriend and stuff and it just like it shouldn't be like that I feel like it should just come natural instead of like, here, let me help you. Come on, let's go. I'll break you in. It's not always like this when a younger person dates an older person, but as far as Marco and Dylan went, I, I thought the vibe just felt too weird. It didn't feel like a partnership. Same with Frankie and Jonah. It just didn't feel like a partnership. And finally, we'll wrap it up with number 10, Sav and Holly J. Remember that that happened? Remember that thing that made no sense? Yeah, that actually happened like a stain on our poop deck. I tried to omit this boyfriend recycling thing from my list. You know, this whole situation where someone dates their best friend's ex. I mean, that's, that's happened throughout Degrassi, which is kind of weird because I didn't see it happen a lot in real life. Anyway, this seemed stupid, pointless, forced, a little uncomfortable, and it would have never happened in real life. Shiver me timbers, that was fun. Don't worry, our nautical journeys aren't over. Drift back over here sometime to open your sails with me and explore the waters of more Degrassi relationships here on Broomheads. Bye!